Hi, I'm Goose, and welcome to Color Theory in Minecraft. This is episode two of the Deep Dive series. Today, we're going to be talking about how our eyes see color. We have to think of our eyes and brain as one unit to understand how we perceive color. We'll go over some basic anatomy to start. As light enters the eye, it hits what's called the retina. Your retina is packed full of cells that respond to light. These cells are called photoreceptors. Your photoreceptors turn that light into an electrical signal that travels up the optic nerve, into your brain, and then it's decoded and turned into an image that you can see. I've made a model here to demonstrate. When I turn on the lights, the light is going to hit the retina. It's going to create an electrical signal that travels up the optic nerve. And then the brain is going to decode the image that the eye is seeing. So the light hits your retina. Your photoreceptors generate an electrical signal that travels up the optic nerve, and the brain decodes the image. We have two kinds of photoreceptors in our eyes, cone cells and rod cells. Rod cells respond to luminance, or how light or dark something is. Cone cells respond to color. Humans have three types of cone cells, short, medium, and long. They're named this way because those are the wavelengths of light that they're the most sensitive to. Remember, color is determined by the wavelength of the light. So we have cells that respond the most to short wavelengths, cells that respond the most to medium wavelengths, and cells that respond the most to long wavelengths. This is a graph visualizing the peak sensitivity of each cell. Notice how they peak around red, green, and blue. We see all the colors through different ratios of these three types of cells and rods being activated. This is called trichromatic vision. Tri meaning three and chromatic meaning color. Color blindness occurs when one or more of these types of cone cells don't work correctly or not at all. There are four general types of color blindness, protonopia, deuteranopia, tritonopia, and monochromacy. Protonopia is caused by the absence of the long cone cells. So wavelengths like red appear gray and violets look the same as blues. Deuteranopia is caused by the absence of medium cone cells. Their vision is very similar to those with protonopia, but they also have a harder time seeing yellow. Tritonopia is caused by the absence of the short cone cells, so short wavelength colors like blue and violet appear greenish and dull, even black, and yellow and orange appear white and pink. Monochromacy is caused by the absence of all three cone cells, so everything is in shades of gray and low detail. Vision is very difficult for people with monochromacy. Sometimes the cells are there, but they just don't quite work right so the range of colors can change from person to person. In that case, it wouldn't be called protonopia, it would be called protonomaly. Same with deuteranomaly and tritonomaly. Trichromatic vision was first proposed and tested in the 1800s by two people named Thomas Young and Hermann Helmholtz. This was, at the time, the dominant theory for how color vision worked. But not everyone agreed with this. One of the people that opposed trichromatic vision was a German physiologist named Ewald Herring. Herring theorized that we had three sets of cells in our eyes, each one corresponding to a different pair. One was reactive to blue and yellow light, one was reactive to red and green light, and the other one was just reactive to lightness and darkness. He called this opponent process theory. Opponent process theory states that everything we see is determined by a ratio of these three pairs. It also states that only one half of each pair can be active at once. So if the red half of the cell is active, the green half turns off. This means that if we see something that is orange, the green half turns off and the blue half turns off and we're left with just yellow and red. So we see orange. This explained why we didn't see things like reddish green or bluish yellow. There is a lot of research done that allegedly confirmed this, but there are some issues with Herring's opponent process. Some of this research was done by two scientists named Sviatikin and McNichols. In the 1950s, they looked at the retinal cells of a fish and exposed them to lights, recording how they reacted to different colors. They found cells that seemed to react to red and green light, and when the red light went up, the green response went down. They used this as evidence to confirm Herring's opponent process theory, but the problem is, they weren't entirely correct. For example, the green that the cells were reacting to had a wavelength of 492 nanometers. They labeled this as green, but to a human, 492 nanometers is cyan. So in reality, the cell was responding to red and cyan, not red and green. This may seem trivial, but it has some big implications. 
New research threw another wrench into Herring's theory when they discovered cells in macaque monkeys that respond directly to green and magenta light, although the blue-yellow reaction seems to have been true. We've come to a crossroads between trichromatic vision and opponent process theory. We know we have three types of cone cells, but now we think they may respond to color in a neurological, if not physiological level, the way that Herring proposed. In theory, this leaves us with three pairs of colors, and through different ratios of these pairs, we see every color. Red cyan, green magenta, and blue yellow. This is called complementary vision theory, and it's gaining traction as the most accurate model of how we see color. You may notice that these pairs can be broken down into two sets of primary colors, red, green, blue, and cyan, magenta, and yellow. But I always thought there was only one group of primaries, and they were red, yellow, and blue. Well, turns out that's not true, and there are multiple sets of primary colors. Oh, well, then what exactly are primary colors? Well, that's a great question, and we'll be covering it in the next episode.